Now, Cisco documentation, so uh, you can read uh, ideally a lot of white papers, which are very good documents in general, and configuration guides, command references. So configuration guides is going to be basically the iOS configuration guide for different features. Command references is going to be details of how a specific command works in case you have to look it up. Now, I don't want to uh, basically, uh, let's say, get you sidetracked or... Um, uh, but what I'm trying to say is that as you read Cisco's documentation and any book in general, at the CCNA level, you're gonna, not going to be able to spot any errors. Now, books are tend to be in general less uh, less uh, tend to have less errors. So Cisco Cisco's and other vendors' books that you can find on Safari Online or Amazon or whatever tend to have less errors, but the documentation tends to have a, a, quite a, a lot more errors and also uh, a lot more misconfigurations being presented. So unfortunately, it's it's there are not very good resources, and as uh, we're gonna pick up some of the some of the examples throughout the week. But at the CCNA level, it's the best thing you can get. And what I was trying to say with this concept of, of what do you do, how do you deal with those errors in there because you're not aware of them. That's why basically if you read something and you then you put it at, at put it live on, on on devices, you're gonna not only spot what the problems are, you're gonna see that the example was wrong, the configuration was not good. And also if you actually take time to actually you know map this technology steps with the commands, you're gonna also see if Cisco is actually missing some commands or has some extra available commands in there. Because if you aim towards becoming an expert and somebody calls you in to configure a specific feature or technology like an IPsec VPN tunnel, you don't go and put, put in there configuration-wise all of the possible commands just to make sure it works. Because first of all, it act may actually not work. And second of all, is basically at that point you may actually open up security holes and you may actually expose the customer to specific problems just because you put in there a bunch of you know extra commands which are not needed for that technology to work the way the customer wants it to work. So that's what that's what that's what's gonna, what's going to end up happening if you go and just copy paste from Cisco's examples commands, uh, then you ping through the tunnel, and if pinging works, it means the tunnel is up and running, and it should work. So you should never assume things; just verify. So the more you do this, the more you read in a, even a book, or even a watch a video, or even you wa read the command reference documentation, or whatever you read, the more you just take that knowledge, and, and that after you have, you have understood it, you put it in practice, you, it's going to be way better for you to just build the knowledge, and also spot errors, and also see if there are any extra commands which are actually not needed. Cisco representations are pretty uh, good in general. Are very very good documents actually. This ones, so you go to CiscoLive365.com and you're going to be able to see a uh, the uh, the PDF file of pretty much all presentations from Cisco Live. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, there are some of them for which you have to pay and you have to be present to be able to get access to those. But most of them are available on their website and you just need a regular username and password. You don't need special, um, let's say, rights. You don't need to have to be affiliated with a Cisco partner or something like that. It's just a regular user account that you can use to log in and access content from Cisco representations in both a video format, which is a registration of the session, and also a, a PDF format, which is basically the presentation itself. And in there, you can sort by technology and difficulty level. So just to show you real fast, you can go on Cisco's, uh, let's go fast in here, Cisco Live 365, on-demand library, and in here we can either So you can either mean, uh, filter by the technology, like based on the, for example, I want to filter the uh, the presentation based on the technology like data center management, or you can filter them based on the year of, of the event. 
in the location. In general, multiple filters are highly recommended to be used. Or also you can filter them based on, and that's very useful actually, based on the level. Because we have in here three levels, introductory, which is basic knowledge for specific topics. Then you have intermediate, then you have advanced. Which means at this point at the CCNA level you don't go to the advanced ses sessions. You first go to introductory. Then if you find yourself comfortable with the knowledge from that presentation, you move on to the intermediate presentation of that technology. And if you find yourself, you know, uh, uh, good good enough with with the topics as covered at the detailed uh, of the intermediate session, then you move on to the advanced session and gain uh, more knowledge at least theory because it's only a presentation. And last but not least, Cisco Validated Designs, which is found, you can find those at cisco.com slash go slash CVD, and you can sort those by technologies. Now, as you, uh, hopefully you're going to move on and practice and become an expert in, in the near future, you're going to end up discovering by yourself that basically those design guides, so some of them, actually most of them, are basically built to like a, you know best practices deployment for specific technology other of them are are built for example to be more on the common implementation thing part of things so some of them are just saying this is how you should build this technology other are just saying this is how the technology is actually being built in most common use cases so you get to get you you get to see both of them which is a very good thing but now the cvd is basically something that you would go in there at the CCNA level just to to basically just out of curiosity, just to you know try to understand more things than that's what than that was presented in at the CCNA level or CCNP level. But bottom line is, and what most people are doing, they take those uh, the, those documents as like you know uh, the whole true and nothing but a true and the only way to do things, and they memorize that around as well. So they believe that, hey, if I know validated design, then I'm an expert in that field, which is very wrong. Because first of all, uh, again, you should focus on technology. And as, as long as you understand why a technology came up to begin with in the first place, what are the building blocks? How does it work? What are the advanced options? How do those options work? What are their purposes? What, what, what do I, why do I have those advanced options? If you understand that inside out, then doesn't matter what is the, you know, your customer requirements, doesn't matter what, what implementation, uh, let's say, options you have, you're going to be able to identify, first of all, the proper solution for your customer, and uh, and second, the proper way to implement that solution, which can be close to the validated, validated design of Cisco, or can be so so you know far away than that design of Cisco. If you're gonna try and just you know grab that knowledge, believing that knowing how to how those designs, I'm gonna be an expert. You're actually again just fooling yourself uh, for real this time. And, for example, and it makes sense. Just think about it. Uh, to be able to, first of all, to be able to design a network because those are validated designs. You have to first know inside out how things work. I mean, how can you design a car if you don't know what are the components of the car? What are the, how do the, those, how do those components interact with each other? Which one comes first? Which ones come second? If you, I, I'm not saying you cannot just, you cannot read a validated design car, let's say, uh, manufacturing and understand it, but actually it's just knowledge that you have read. If somebody asks you something close to what you have read, or if a problem shows up uh, to, you know, in, in, in the building process of the car, you're never going to be able to actually uh, troubleshoot and spot what the problem is. We're never going to be able to actually un uh, reply to a question which is which is very closely related to that design guide, but it's not a hundred percent copy paste of the design guide. While if you just know the knowledge, then you don't need to know any validated designs. You just go and, and and see what a customer wants. You have the knowledge, and you tell him how to implement that knowledge, and you implement it for him. So I'm not saying the validated designs are not good documents, are very good documents. But don't try just to, uh, you know, absorb the content by memorization and then also beha behave like being uh, being an expert in the, in those fields. 
it's going to take you a long time till you actually be able to understand exactly why is that design guide the way it is why the technologies are built in that way and what happens if you build them in another way